ये भारत न रुकता है ये भारत न थकता है ये भारत न हापता है और नहीं ये भारत हारता है सेवेंटी सिक्स ईयर्स It may seem like a long time for us humans, but for countries, it's not such a long time. In the grand scheme of things, India is still a young nation. Its people are young, its constitution is young, and its democracy is young. And that's what makes its achievements spectacular. What India has done in 76 years, countries have not been able to do in centuries. whether it's economic progress or social justice or diplomatic influence today we celebrated all those achievements indians all over the world did and it is a day to celebrate but it's also a day to look ahead what will the next 76 years look like what are the challenges what are the objectives how can india make the world a better place tonight we'll discuss all of that but first Let's see how the day unfolded. As always, it began with a grand ceremony at the Red Fort. Hundreds of people gathered to hear the Prime Minister's speech. Prime Minister Modi first went to Raj Ghat. He paid his respects to Mahatma Gandhi, and then he proceeded to the Red Fort. It was his 10th Independence Day address. It's a huge honor. Only four prime ministers in our history have made 10 Red Fort speeches: Jawaharlal Nehru, Indira Gandhi, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and now Narendra Modi. He inspected the Guard of Honor. He unfurled the tricolor and then the address began. It lasted around 90 minutes. The prime minister talked about a number of issues like the economy, the situation in Manipur, women empowerment, corruption, dynastic politics. He covered all of it. We are bringing you the five most important bits according to us. Number 1 is the economy. The prime minister has made an ambitious pledge today. He said India will be among the world's three largest economies in the next 5 years. Listen to this. को विश्वास दिलाता हूं आने वाले पांच साल में मोदी का गारंटी है देश पहले तीन वैश्विक इकोनॉमी में अपना जगह ले लेगा ये पक्का जगह ले लेगा वेर इज इंडिया रैंक एट द मोमेंट We are at number five. The U.S. and China are clear at number one and two, but Japan and Germany are within range. The goal is to leapfrog them by 2028. Multiple reports have projected the same, including one by the State Bank of India. But the question is not just the size of the economy; it's also the quality of it. We'll come to that later. But point number two for the moment: it was on Manipur. The state has been gripped by ethnic violence since May this year. More than 140 people have been killed. More than 70,000 are displaced. The opposition has accused the prime minister of being silent on this. Today he did speak about it. He said peace is gradually returning to the state. Listen to this. Dinon se lagatar shanti ki khabre aa rahi hain. Desh Manipur ke logon ke saath hai. Desh मणिपुर के लोगों को पिछले कुछ दिनों से जो शांति बनाए रखी है उस शांति के पर्व को आगे बढ़ाएं और शांति से ही समाधान का रास्ता निकलेगा और राज्य और केंद्र सरकार मिलकर के उन समस्याओं के समाधान के लिए भरपूर प्रयास कर रही है करती रहेगी Number 3 was India's role in global affairs the prime minister was clear about one thing the world order has changed he compared the pandemic to the second world war both events changed world politics they created new power equations the question is what role does india play in this new world order prime minister modi says the role of a friend a vishwamitra in his words hamara rashtriya charitra vishwa mangal ke liye sochne wala hona chahiye हमें देश को इतना मजबूत बनाना है 
जो विश्व मंगल के लिए भी अपनी भूमिका अदा करे और आज कोरोना के बाद मैं देख रहा हूं जिस प्रकार के संकट की घड़ी में देश ने दुनिया की मदद की उसका परिणाम है कि आज दुनिया में हमारा देश एक विश्व मित्र के रूप में विश्व का अतूट साथी के रूप में आज मेरे देश की पहचान बनी है दिस टाइज इन विद इंडिया फॉरेन पॉलिसी डोंट टेक साइड try to reduce differences find common ground now this independence day was an important one for prime minister modi because next year is election year in india we saw two shades of narendra modi today both the prime minister and the politician he accused opposition parties of dynastic politics he also promised to return next year to the red fort it was his way of saying that he will win in 2024 listen to this aaj mere desh ke loktantra mein ek aisi vikruti aayi hai जो कभी भारत के लोकतंत्र को मजबूती नहीं दे सकती और वो क्या है बीमारी परिवारवादी पार्टियां और उनका तो मंत्र क्या है पार्टी ऑफ द फैमिली बाय द फैमिली एंड फॉर द फैमिली और अगली बार 15 अगस्त को इसी लाल किले से मैं आपको देश की उपलब्धियां आपके सामर्थ्य आपके संकल्प उसमें हुई प्रगति उसकी जो सफलता है उसके गौरवगान उससे भी अधिक आत्मविश्वास के सामने आपके सामने मैं प्रस्तुत करूंगा पॉलिटिक्स साइड देर इज मच टू बी प्राउड ऑफ द नाइनटीन फोर्टी सो द इमर्जेंस ऑफ मेनी इंडिपेंडेंट कंट्रीज नॉट ऑल ऑफ देम फ्लरिस्ट सम आर लिविंग on imf bailouts some are terror havens and some are political pariahs india though is a major power in the making we don't realize how priceless that is having said that challenges remain the prime minister himself talked about one of them inflation retail prices surged 7.44% in the month of july that's a 15 month high the month before in june it was just 4.8% so the trajectory is not looking good Food prices are the worst affected. They were up by more than 11% in July. To give you some context, these numbers are much higher than the Reserve Bank of India's tolerance. They prefer inflation at around 4%. We have almost 8%. The Prime Minister acknowledged that more work needs to be done on this issue. Aaj duniya mehangai ke sankat se jooth rahi hai. पूरी दुनिया की अर्थव्यवस्था को महंगाई ने दबोच के रखा है हम भी दुनिया से जिन सामान की जरूरत होती है लाते हैं तो हमें सामान तो इंपोर्ट करते हैं हमारा दुर्भाग्य है कि हमें महंगाई भी इंपोर्ट करनी पड़ती है मुझे तो मेरे देशवासियों को महंगाई की बोझ कम से कम हो इस दिशा में और भी कदम उठाने हैं और हम उस कदम को उठा के रहेंगे मेरा प्रयास निरंतर जारी रहेंगे another challenge is economic equality you talk about becoming the fifth largest economy in the world or the third largest economy but what is the quality of this growth is everyone benefiting from it i have some numbers for you in india the richest 1% of the population owns around 40% of the wealth the top 5% own 62% of the wealth this is gross inequality Let's look at the last decade from 2012 to 2021 only 3% of the wealth generated went to the bottom 50% of the population 97% went to the top half again gross inequality we need to fix this gap india's economic pie is certainly getting bigger chances are it will become the third largest economy by 2028 but we need to share that pie better i know it's easier said than done But the last 76 years have been nothing short of a miracle. If anyone can do it, it's India.